We are on to chapter 22.2, and in this one we are talking about um, Darwin's ideas and what he found on his journey. So, um, so Darwin was a geologist. You don't need to know this stuff about him wanting to be a doctor or whatever. So he traveled on the Beagle from England to South America, and it was a five-year experience, and he got to see a lot. He was a naturalist, so his job was to go out and collect different species and things like that. So he was able to observe a lot of different species, and he noticed a lot of things. One of them was that um, he found a lot of fossils, which were very different than things he had seen back in Europe, but were very similar to the things he was to the animals current extant living animals that he was finding in South America, but they weren't exactly the same, and he thought that that was weird because at that time, it was considered that species were permanent, that God made things the way they were, and they were just going to be like that forever. Um, so it was weird that he was finding fossils of species that were not similar to anything he'd seen before, but close enough that he could tell that like, this might be related to that bird, but it's not the same. Um, then he also noticed, he, or when he was in Chile, there was an earthquake, and he saw rocks shift. So he saw the earth move. Um, and he noticed some fossils in that rock, and then he also knew that, um, in another place that he had been, oh, in the Andes, he found fossils of sea organisms, like, all the way up in the mountains, and so, obviously, they didn't live there, they needed to be in the water, not at the top of a mountain, and so he was able to kind of come up with the idea that, okay, the earth is changing, um, and it wasn't, that wasn't really known before either, and so he says, okay, if the earth is changing, then it must also be the case that animals are changing along with it. So the earthquake and seeing these fossils in places where they didn't belong um, got the ball rolling on, ball rolling on his idea. Um, and so Lyle, or Darwin, was of the belief that the earth was not more than, or that the earth was more than 6,000 years old, which is what it was currently believed to be that old at his time. And he was like, there's no way. Based on these fossils, it's more than 6,000 years old. Um, so then they stopped the Galapagos Island. And then he could see that there were species on the Galapagos that were basically the same as the ones on the mainland in South America, but were a little bit different. They were a little bit different from each other on each island that they visited. And he realized there, okay, why are there so many different species of exactly the same thing? This is weird. Um, that's what his trip looked like. He went all over the globe. That's what the Galapagos Islands are. They are an archipelago, which is a lot of different islands all really close to each other. Hawaii is also an archipelago. Um, there's his ship. So when he was looking closely at these species, as was his job, he noticed that the changes, the differences between the different species on the different islands suited them perfectly. So the ones that had longer beaks on this island, it worked better for them there, and the ones that had shorter beaks on this island, it worked better for them there. And so we started to notice that they were probably, they had adapted to their environment. Um, and so he was able to see, okay, so new species probably come from adapting to environments. And now that we have done a lot more science since Darwin's time, we have realized that actually is what happened. Um, so here's four different or three different finches from the Galapagos. This one eats cacti, this one eats insects, and this one eats seeds. So you can see their beak shapes are all different from each other. So Darwin came up with the term natural selection because he was saying that humans have been doing the same thing, um, making adaptations to living things for a very long time. So the example that he gave was um, humans did this with their crops, with domesticated plants and animals. If you're raising pigs to be fat, to be eaten, you're not going to choose to keep the scrawniest little pigs to have babies because they're never going to make fat pigs, right? You're going to pick the fattest pigs and then you're going to mate them together to get fatter pigs. And so he called that artificial selection because it wasn't happening, not happening naturally. Humans were doing it. But this happening outside in the everyday world should be natural selection. Um, and so the process is basically that individuals with the favorable inherited traits, so the ones that are better, the ones that they got from their parents, it's all based on DNA, all based on genetics, those ones, the ones that were best suited to their environment, 
those are the ones that are gonna live. And if you live, then those genes are gonna go with you and the ones that are not suitable, don't get passed on to the next generation because those guys die because you're better than them. Um, and he, this other guy, Wallace, came up with the same idea. His book was called The Origin of Species. Um, and so the, the thing, he never said evolution. Darwin never said evolution. Um, but he did say descent with modification. And so that is Darwin's big thing, descent with modification. Um, and basically it is that we're passing down our traits, but it's changing with every generation. Um, and so there is, we're always becoming better adapted to our environment. But the thing with that is that we all came from a common ancestor. So any two species that are similar, but are, they're different species, but are still similar, they must have had a common ancestor and just changed as the generations went on. Um, so Darwin viewed life as a tree. And you can actually see drawings. This is one of Darwin's drawings, I think, and here's a bunch of trees. And that's, that's still how we view it today. Um, and so this is more what would they look like today. This is um, on page... 457 in your textbook, and this um, shows the evolutionary tree of, rel of elephants based on their fossils. So the way that this works is every point where two different species diverge, so right here is the two species of African elephants, right here, that was their common ancestor. And however long ago the common ancestor lived, fits onto the x-axis of this graph. So that would have been about two million years ago is when the common ancestor of the two African elephants lived. Now the next closest divergence point was between the Asian and African elephants because they are still very closely related. Whereas we have all these other things back here that are extinct and their common ancestor was a very, very, very long time ago. Um, oh, here is an example of humans breeding artificially. So this is wild mustard. This is one that was just found in nature. Um, and if we uh, chose all the plants that had the biggest flowers and stems, we would get broccoli. If we chose all of them for a big top flower, we would get cabbage. If we chose all of them for side flowers, we get Brussels sprouts. And if we chose them for leaves, we get kale. So all of these different species all came from one through humans choosing what they wanted. So for example, if I just really liked flowers at the top the best and I like to eat them, I'd pick the ones that had the biggest flowers at the top, breed them together, and generation by generation, those flowers would get a little bit bigger, a little bit bigger. And then eventually it became cabbage or it became Brussels sprouts if someone else liked the side flowers the best. So that is exactly what's happening in natural selection except it is nature choosing it, not humans. Kohlrabi is what that is. Okay, so Darwin had two observations, um, and these led to two inferences, and this is kind of exactly what we think about for natural selection. So the first one is that members of a population, uh, members of a population often vary in their traits. So that's really important. Members of a species are not exactly the same. There's always variation, and that's super important. You know that with humans, you know that with dogs, you know that with plants, you know that with everything, um, but you probably shouldn't realize it. So here's a picture of variation. This is a bunch of ladybugs. Some have very light spots, some have really dark spots. Some have a lot of spots, some have a little spots. Some are bigger than each other, some are yellower, some are oranger. That is the natural variation. That's super important to have natural variation in, in a species. Um, and we'll talk about why that is a little bit later, but natural variation is key. The second observation is that all species produce more offspring than the environment can support. Um, so that means that everyone's gonna make more babies than will live. Um, and the reason for that is that a lot of these are going to die and never reproduce. So we make as many babies as we can in the hope that some of them will live to succeed and reproduce themselves. So this is an example of that. That is a puffball fungus. And what that does is it's a, it's a fungus. It's, um, and these spores are its um, gametes, its, its way of reproducing. So what it does is it shoots out probably billions of these guys into the environment in the hopes that a couple of, the, probably more than a couple, hundred or so of them will live. Um, and so that is, they produce so many more than could ever survive. And that is just because it's unlikely that one of those is going to land in the perfect spot and reproduce and be perfect. And so by making a billion of them, the likelihood that a couple will stick is a whole lot higher than if it only made a couple. But all living things do this. 
Um, you have to remember that humans don't necessarily fall into the same category as all other living things because we change our environment. Our environment doesn't really change us. So uh, humans don't really fall into this necessarily, but, they def but we definitely did as we were evolving. Okay, so from those two observations, one, that natural va variation already exists always, and two, that all organisms make more um, offspring than can survive, Darwin came up with two inferences. So he took his observations and he turned them into inferences. Um, uh, individuals whose inherited traits give them a higher probability of surviving. So if you have more spots and that makes you more likely to survive and reproduce, though getting to reproduction is very important, um, they will leave more offspring than other individuals. Which makes perfect sense. It's totally logical. If you can blend in and you don't get eaten, you're far more likely to pass on your genes to have to reproduce because you're not going to get eaten. If you stick out like a sore thumb, you're going to get eaten and you're never going to pass on your traits. So that is an inference that Darwin made based on his observations, based on the fact that there is a variety of phenotypes. If we all looked the same, we would all have the same likelihood of getting eaten. Um, and the second inference is that the unequal ability of individuals to survive and reproduce. So, like I just said, this is some of us are going to live and reproduce, some of us are going to die. And it's just the way the world works. Um, but because of that, the favorable, favorable traits, the ones that helped you survive, are going to be passed on and accumulated. They're going to amplify um, over thousands of generations. Because if it's better, then it's just going to keep getting better. If it allows you to survive and reproduce. It'll keep being passed on. Um, so the summary, individuals with certain heritable traits survive and reproduce at a higher rate than others. If you can blend in and not get eaten, you're certainly going to live longer than the guy next to you who sticks out. It's just the way that it works. The predator cannot see you, so you will live and you will pass on your blending in traits they will die. They will die with their sticking out traits. Um, and that is important because there needs to be variation. You will look different than the guy next to you. That is a fact. Um, natural selection increases the adaptation of organisms to their environment over time. It's just the ones that work best in that environment live to reproduce. The ones that don't die off. And so it's just you just get more and more adapted to your environment. Um, and if an environment changes, this is the problem. This is why evolution never stops, because the environment's always changing. There's always new predators, or a predator is dying, or there's been a natural disaster, or whatever it might be. So you are basically chasing a moving target. Evolution is chasing being perfectly adapted to its environment, but the environment is always changing. So evolution must always continue. And that's how we get new species. So um, that comes later. But we can see these are uh, two species of the same bug that adapted differently. So it was advantageous for this mantid to blend in with the flower, so it looks like a flower so it won't get eaten, whereas this mantid blends in with the leaves so it won't get eaten. If they were to swap places, you could easily see the leaf mantid over here on the flower, you could easily see the flower over here on the leaf. And so they would get eaten, not pass on their traits. So that's how it works. Um, another important thing is that individuals do not evolve. That leaf mantid did not evolve. It didn't change. What happens is populations evolve over time. So it takes thousands of generations for an evolution to happen. Um, and evolution or natural selection does not introduce new traits. The we, natural selection can only work on the variation that there is right there. If everyone sticks out, then there is no one to blend in, and that one isn't going to be selected for because there isn't anyone that blends in. Um, so natural selection does not introduce new traits into the environment. Mutations are what introduce new traits into the environment. But, um, and then obviously adaptations differ with different environments. So that's back to this picture right here. They would not succeed in each other's environments, but in their own they are very, very successful. And that's 22.2.